Well, we're fulfilling orders. I uh, just got back. Hunter had a golf tournament yesterday. He uh, had his district finals, his district qualifier. Uh, he didn't have his A game. He definitely uh, didn't have his A game, but I'll tell you what, I'm pretty proud of him. He grinded it out and he qualified for states again. It's his fourth year. Uh, four straight years he's going to state, so I'm pretty proud of him. He uh, definitely, definitely did what was needed and you can't win states if you're not there. So I'm back in the warehouse. It's Wednesday, I'm fulfilling some orders here to get uh, that done before I head on the road. I'm actually going to Minktoberfest and Don Powell uh, has done that for well over a decade. Uh, Minktoberfest is a really cool place. Last year is the first year I went. I actually uh, had heard about it and you know I just the timing never worked out for me but last year I made it a point and this year I'm making it a point to go out and support Don and the Minktoberfest and it's a uh, it's a really nice environment where basically everybody talks trapping it's a uh, obviously Minktoberfest it's about mink but it's not just mink people are talking about fox and coyote and I mean, just last year, I can remember I showed up and the first couple people I saw was Ronnie Leggett and uh, Gary Jepson. So there's just a wealth of knowledge that uh, is there. And everybody gets along. It's almost like a family reunion. The food is out of this world. Uh, Albert Wunsch is actually one of the chefs. He's actually a friend of mine. And he's always at the NRA uh show in harrisburg so i see albert down there he's wrote books i think he's from montana i believe uh montana right home but i think montana and he's just a fantastic chef and he's one of the ones that does all the cooking and you definitely will not leave there uh hungry we'll leave it at that but i'm going to make toberfest uh go out there and relax for a couple days um and then once i get back we'll uh We'll be hammering a lot of stuff out of here before I go on my trip. I'll be trapping Pennsylvania the first part of the season. Um, I'll go to a few of the places that I go. We'll take the nest raiders out. Uh, we will harvest them. If I catch any fox, uh, they're going to be let go. Obviously, bobcat are going to be let go because you can't keep bobcat. Uh, they're not in season at that time. But I let every fox go also. Um, not only the grays, which I always let go, as a lot of you know out there, I don't kill gray fox. They're my favorite animal. They're like my spirit animal. I love their disposition. They're just uh, mean and nasty and aggressive, and, and I love that. But uh, I let the red fox go early as well because they're not prime and there's really no value to them, and I'm not going to kill them, uh, the red fox, uh, if I'm not going to skin it out. But we'll harvest the... Uh, nest raiders and help out a few of the farms that we trapped back where I grew up. Uh, kind of cut my teeth uh, a little bit to get started. And then I go with, uh, I, it's new territory. I'm going to New York on the New York, Pennsylvania border over by Erie. Uh, Phil Farrar, who's with the NWTF. Um, they're big supporters of us and North American Trapper. And we're gonna go over there and trap some of uh, his areas and help him out and, and uh, get them going in the right direction. Then from there, I'll come home. I'll do a few things. Uh, I'll head to the Adirondacks with uh, Eddie Dakin again. Most likely the eh, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, somewhere in that range, 12th through 15th of November. Come back, spend Thanksgiving, hunt deer with my son, and then I'm on the road every day. I think I'll probably sleep in my own bed like I think two or three nights over a four, four and a half month period. Uh, we'll be going to Illinois twice, back and forth. Um, we'll be going to Nebraska. 
Uh, I'm either going to hit Arkansas with Jim Spencer again or Missouri with Brad Harris. Uh, we're going to go to Kansas. We got a really nice trip uh, scheduled for Kansas. And actually, I'll bring that up right now. Um, we've kind of kept it under wraps. It's been something that's been in the works for about a year. I had uh, collaborated with these two people before, and most of you out there probably watch their stuff too, but I've collaborated with Trapper Jay, Justin Balcom out of uh, the Midwest, and I've also collaborated with Stu uh, Miller, the uh, Coon Creek. And we are actually, I invited them both to come with me to Kansas, out to Midwest Whitetails, and they've both accepted uh, the invite, and we're all three I'm going to trap together. Uh, we'll go to each location, and the first location, maybe Justin picks where he wants to make his set first, and me and Stu will work in around him. We'll go to the next spot, maybe I pick. And you know what? I like that corner, and I want to take that spot, and I'm going to get where I want to set, and then they're going to work in around me. Uh, next place, it'll be Stu's, and we'll just, every place we go, the next guy will pick where he wants to make his set, and the other two will uh, work in around them. And we're gonna chase uh, the bobcats and the coyotes out there. And in between that, we're gonna set a bunch of uh, nest raider sets. And anybody who's watched our Kansas footage, I was there alone for four days and I got about 110, I think 110, 120 sets in. And I ended up uh, getting 70 critters in four days. Hell, the last day, I think I got 22 or 21 or 22 and the line was just starting. So. I fully expect that we're going to have a good time together. I've really enjoyed uh, collaborating with them in the past, and uh, we're going to do that. And this is kind of the formal announcement. With that, one night I'll do a live on uh, YouTube back at the camp, or maybe in the the skinning garage. We don't have a shed. We got a whole big garage out there. Uh, Seth's got a really nice facility, and you know he's a good friend of mine. And um, we're going to make this probably a yearly thing to uh, get out to Kansas and do this, but we'll do a live maybe on my sh channel one night. The next night, Trapper Jay will have his live. The next night, Stu will do a live. So we'll continue to do a live every night. Uh, we're also going to bring in uh, Bill Duke's going to come in for a few days and run the line with us. He's going to fly in and, and do that. And uh, I'm bringing one of my uh, right-hand guys from South Dakota, Pete Harper, will be coming down. Uh, he's going to do all of our skinning. So we definitely are not going to have time to skin all the fur that we're going to be catching. So we're bringing a skinner in. And we don't actually have to uh, – I actually talked to uh, Seth about renting his cook that cooks for all of the uh, hunters that he has in there. And he's like, we don't use a cook. We just cater it out. So we're gonna actually have our food catered so we won't have to uh, cook at night either. But it's gonna be a nice time. Uh, we're looking at probably the dates of December 14th, 14th, 15th, starting that. Right up to, uh, we'll take you right into almost Christmas. We'll pull on December 22nd, 23rd in that range. They may not be there that whole time. I'll probably be there that whole time, but they're gonna be there most of that at least a week. Uh, and we're gonna run it hard and hopefully catch some. So I wanted to announce that today, but uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna get these orders done and head to uh, Minktoberfest and say hi to all the guys and girls that are out there. I see a lot of posts on Facebook and stuff that uh, people that are heading there already, I'm gonna go in tomorrow, I'm not going overnight, I'm gonna go Going over to my dad's place and mow the grass and sit in his chair and relax tonight. If I don't mow the grass, uh, this homeowner association is probably going to kick me out for uh, for not keeping up the property. I don't think I've been there in about three weeks to mow the grass, so I'm sure the neighbors are bitching about that. But there's only so much time in the day. But yeah, we're going to go to uh, Minktoberfest and get out there and. See some old friends and enjoy. We'll get there, make sure I have the right one, yep. Loose macaroon. Uh, this guy bought a coyote predation kit, so as I've said before, I always, I always wonder, you know, where they may have seen our kits. But this guy here is 
I'm gonna get uh, a coyote kit and I hope that he catches many of them this year uh, as he's out there. But long story short, uh, we're gonna go out there. We'll be back next weekend. We will be back in the warehouse. I'm gonna actually show you a couple things next week um, that I think uh, will help all of you out on your line as I spread these out. Johnny Thorpe lures and a bunch of lures and traps and baits. Start to show some of the uh, cable processes. I'm gonna show you how to make extensions. Um, we do carry uh, all of the cable on rolls um, that we do sell wholesale, um, 500 feet and 1,000 feet uh, smaller rolls. I will show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, that you can buy the uh, the rolls and you know cut them yourself at home and we sell the swagers and I don't even know if that's how you pronounce that name swagger S W A G G E R that's how it was on the paperwork when I bought Dakota line and then I ordered some from China and I was corrected by the plant over there that it's S-W-A-G-E-R. There's no two G's. So I don't know what it is. I don't even know how to pronounce the damn name. Swagger, Swagger, <laughs> I don't even know. But I'm gonna show you how to make some extensions. And I got a mess here, some stuff that I gotta go through, but I'm gonna show you how to make some extensions. These look to be six foot uh, regular cable extensions. It's a very easy process, but I'm gonna start showing some of that for anybody out there that's looking to, you know, learn. Ooh. It looks like Miss Renee did some work yesterday. She got uh, all of the Mountain Man and the Reaper bottled up. Well, she's got it boxed up too. Awesome, got it in the cases, but this is a clean room right now. We gotta fill that empty floor with with some stuff. And I don't know if she actually, she's got a bunch of the Mountain Man boxed up on the Mountain Man pallet. So by the end of her box, and we'll definitely have a pretty close to a full pallet of that. But as I said, I'm gonna start showing you some of the, making some cable stuff. I, I got another, <laughs> I did start that process about two months ago or a month ago, month and a half, whatever, I showed you cutting open them deer balls. I still got like five buckets of them that I need to scrape that paste out. I got in there, what reminded me of it, I got an email this morning from a guy asking me when the deer lure was gonna be available. And quite honestly, I emailed him back and said, sir, I, I really don't know. Um, probably not by this deer season. <laughs> That's what I wrote him, I don't think he was, probably looking for that response but it is what it is we'll get it done i'll scrape the rest of them deer testicles we'll tincture that out we've showed that formula with the johnny thorpe video that we did uh tincture it out um mix it with vodka and glycerin and tonquin musk and the different things that go into that and if you want to make that all you got to do is get your buck and you can scrape your own pods but in the meantime we'll uh put that together you know johnny said when he was making that when i was doing that video back in man i can't remember when we did that it was probably 06 or 07 that that lure in and of itself is a great he called it a woofer lure uh which means you know canine it's gonna work in in a lot of those canine situations anytime he said woofer that's what he meant so if you're ever watching one of his videos and you know he talks about well we're out here we're doing this we're doing that that's a good woofer location or a good woofer lure or a good woofer he's talking about canines it will work for wolves obviously if you have wolves but you know you can trap or can't trap them depending on the the day of the week or the 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 way the political wind blows in Wisconsin or Montana or Idaho at this time, but uh, when he talks about Wolfer, he's talking about that canine. More more often than not, he's talking about the coyote. So keep that in mind uh, if you're watching any of his stuff that we've posted or 
any of the videos that you've uh, seen. All in all, I'm gonna finish up these orders, get them done, uh, make sure that I have everything I need to go to make Toberfest, and I'm gonna head out there and enjoy the next couple days. But as I said, we're gonna collaborate with Trapper Jay, Justin Balcom, and Stu Miller at Coon Creek. Um, invited them and they both accepted the invite to Kansas this year and we're gonna go out and, and have a good time and work together and and uh, I fully expect to uh, be giving Pete enough uh, work to do at night when we uh, come back at the end of the day with hopefully a full truckload of critters every day but uh, it's uh, something I'm looking forward to as I said it's been in the works for about a year and I, I definitely think you'll enjoy that and we'll all be filming while we're there so each one of us is going to have our own spin on uh, what we're doing out there so you know make sure you as time goes on and I'll remind you if you're watching us and you're not subscribed to them but definitely subscribe to uh, Coon Creek, Stu Miller and also uh, Trapper J, Justin Balcom and they'll be doing a different spin you'll be probably seeing a lot of the same stuff but it'll be from a different camera angle and, and from a different perspective which is kind of cool you'll be able to see how all three of us do our do our things and compare and as i said we'll do the lives at night too which will be kind of unique we'll have to uh work that into the equation but as i said i'm pretty excited today i'm pretty happy pretty proud of my son uh, qualifying for states again he qualified all four years of high school and his goal is to go and win states and if he plays his game uh, he'll have to putt a little bit better than he did yesterday he just could not sink a putt he lipped out a couple um, he won 80 to one and he burned the edge on a couple more and left a couple other ones short but they were uh, Donald Ross greens and anybody that knows anything about golf knows that Donald Ross greens are some of the hardest to putt on and and uh, if he clears up his putting and hits a fairway or two, he'll do all right at States. But I'm pretty happy. I got a smile on my face uh, from him doing well yesterday. It's, it's funny. <laughs> I, I don't want to ramble on it. But from playing baseball for 10 years professionally and having that athletic drive and that spirit, uh, you know, I lost it for a long time. I really did. I lost it. I, I, I retired or not really retired. My body broke down in 2001 and I lost that competitive spirit. I, you know, the competitive spirit was used in other things, whether it's business or whatever, but sports and athletics, I just, I, I haven't had that in a long time. And over the last couple of years following Hunter and, and living somewhat vicariously through every shot and like oh good shot or oh man it's actually uh, it's reinvigorated uh the spirit per se for for his athletics and sports in general but it's uh pretty cool that he gets this opportunity again and hopefully he'll capitalize on it but we get these orders done head to make toberfest and we'll be back here next week showing you some more uh things in the warehouse to uh, help you in your own processes. Have a great weekend. The brand is so much bigger than myself or anybody involved with what we're doing. It's, it's the tradition of, you know, it's that woodsmanship that these kids and, and, and even adults can learn just by being out there. That's what we're trying to do. Trying to get people involved, trying to get people to feel that. And every time you go out there with them, you're experiencing that outdoors through them. You know, we're showing the simplicity of things and we're trying to debunk a lot of those myths that, that you know, maybe scares people away from doing it at times, thinking that, oh, it's just too hard, there's too much into it. No, it's pretty easy. And we're gonna show you how easy it is and you're gonna be able to go out and do it. Get started trapping those problem animals and nest raiders today. Become the steward of your own land or lease. Visit NorthAmericanTrapper.com.